Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor and his friend Jake gives you sports betting tips. I'm your host, Professor Sides, and for the latest updates, information, and picks, you can follow me on Twitter at Professor Sides, and you can follow my friend Jake on Twitter at my friend underscore Jake. Today is Friday, August 26, 2022, and we are going to wrap up the week zero games here for the first week here of the college football season. In case you're new here, I've built a mathematical model that predicts what the spread should be for every FBS college football game. That information, along with each team's power rating in a graded A, B, or C pick for every game, this week is available in the Google Sheet that is linked in the show's description. That doesn't mean that I recommend you do the same, as my goal in this episode is to share key information about the games, give you a few things to think on, and tell you why the model or I, or us, or we, like or don't like a certain pick before investing your hard on money on them. I always want y'all to be confident in your picks. I always say this every time on every show here, no matter what the sport is, I never recommend blindly tailing or fading any pick uh, that we're giving out. Hopefully we give you some good justifications and thought processes uh, so that you can come up with picks that you are comfortable with. And before I get to the plays, Remember that there are no locks in gambling, so what I'll give you are loves, likes, and leans to indicate my confidence level with respect to scaling wagers. And as always, please remember that good and bad variants will occur. So as much as I'd like to see will be profitable each and every week, that is an impossible reality uh, for any gambler. Uh, Jake, uh, just you and me today, we were supposed to have Cousin Jared, but some scheduling uh, issues there, he was unable to make it. But uh, y- you and I will take us home here for week zero. Yep, yeah, we will. And before we get into it, I'm just curious, how many bad things have to happen in a row before it's a curse, right? So we had the whole, uh, like, Fansville, DJ Ungalea and all that with the Clemson. Oh, yeah. And then they yeah. were just garbage. And now Bryce yeah. Young's Fansville. So if Alabama's garbage this year, does that mean we've got a Fansville curse? I don't think I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be more than two, you know. I think it's I, I'm more thinking about the Dairy Queen curse for baseball, right? With all yeah. four of those guys. Like four I, four for four is a little bit rough too, though. I think I I think there'll be also I think Alabama will probably be okay this year. Yeah, I mean Alabama's got the kind of yeah, but it's just, oh, it's just I was like, ooh, could could be fun storyline to go into it. Yeah, it, well and of course it's funny. Uh, and I, I mentioned this with cousin Jared uh on our first episode here. Uh we won't talk about any of the good teams this week because I don't play. Um, we will get into it, and uh, lo and behold, my number four ranked team behind our top three, which we know are good, Clem- is Clemson. And I'm like, I'm sure we're going to be talking a lot about Clemson. And, and we talked about them on the preview show, just like how much is riding on this season really the trajectory of that team? And there's all so many question marks. Like, who knows? And like I said, it, it, you know, it, they, well, I don't think it'll take much for them to drop at number four, but I'm sure there's some hot takes going to be had around Clemson. Uh, not really know what to expect. Uh, how much can they bounce back or not, right? The Yeah, the San Diego Sea Lion or something like that picked them to get upset by Georgia Tech first. So, uh, Well, so. I didn't even know that was a thing that was happening. But, you know. Yeah, I didn't either. Saw the headline. was like, mm, that's cool. I mean, as, as I like to say these days, you know, what a world we live in, right? <laughs> All right. Well, before we get to today's show, some reminders. Please hit that like button if you're on YouTube. Also, if you aren't yet, please consider subscribing or following. It's free, and the only way is so we can turn notifications on to ensure you don't miss any the college basketball, MLB, or college football content that this channel provides. Share with a few others in the game. Hit us up on Twitter or drop a comment from YouTube. We love those and try to respond to as many as we can. All lines for this show are accurate as of the time of this recording on Friday afternoon. We'll get this up for you shortly. An interesting week zero slate. I already previewed this for you. We're going to actually go back and talk about a few of the games you've already talked about because there's been some big line movements yeah. and a few of them. We're going to cover those. Let Jake give his take on a few of them. Talk about the game that we skipped uh, that now has a really favorable uh, number for us, in my opinion. Uh, usually our three episodes, we won't really double dip. We'll kind of have a whole slate of games on Monday, a whole slate on Wednesday's episode and a whole slate on Fridays. But uh, this week with fewer games, just a little bit of a different situation. So we'll start off again with that game over in Ireland, Northwestern and Nebraska. Earlier in the week, uh, this number was Northwestern was getting 13 points. And I jumped on North, on Northwestern getting plus 13. Uh, the model said it should be Nebraska minus 12. Uh, I kind of made the comment, I think Nebraska wins, uh, but I don't know if they'll be able to run away. Now the number's all the way down to 10 and a half, a whole different scenario here, eyeing 10 and a half than 13. Um, and, and, and Jake, we were talking about this before the show. Uh, you know, 
if you were like me and you have a Northwestern plus 13 ticket, the model says 12, do you go for that middle, right? That's a big question. If you have that plus 13, you have some options uh, with regards to that. Personally, I, I'm going to let the Northwestern plus 13 ride and just say, I hope to keep it close. Um, but, you know, you can go for that middle if you want. You have to figure out exactly how many key numbers it's crossing to make it worth it. Uh, I, my, my take on this, if I, could get, if I had Northwestern plus 14, and I get Nebraska minus 10, I'm a little more excited than 13 and 10 and a half. But there is that opportunity uh, with the way the line shifted. I'm just going to let it ride at the plus 13 and not try to outthink myself. Uh, but at this point, the model would indicate that you should be playing Nebraska because uh, the model thinks they are more likely to win by 11 uh, or 12 than 10 and a half. And so, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of bounce all around the numbers model. So, Jake, how are you playing this one? Yeah, I'm, I'm right there. I'm kind of wavering back and forth 13. Couldn't really make a decision, and then when I saw this line drop down, I'm hammering the uh, I think they made probably the best coordinator hire of the year with Whipple. You get in, you give him Casey Thompson, who also brought in uh, uh, Washington. Is that his last? Yeah, Marcus Washington from Texas. I think so. He's already got some chemistry with one of his receivers. Brought in a transfer from uh, LSU and Payne. I think that offense is ready to go. And I know that the defense is better than they kind of. Show or whatever because they got kind of overlooked with all the one score game losses, but they bring back one of the better uh, Big Ten linebacker units, and they brought in a TCU transfer. I can't say his name, but for the defensive line, um, so I think I think they're going to be set up really well. And they brought back the rushing game that just blew through Northwestern. I think they ran for 430 yards or something like that. Brought back two of their leading rushers for that. Their offense is set up well to put up the points they need. The breath, or Northwestern's defense is solid ish. <laughs> solid, solid think, adjacent. <laughs> yes, yeah, they're close enough. But their offense, they're going to get tired. The defense is going to get tired. Their offense cannot do it. I mean, they've got a, a good running game, but I mean, they're averaging around four yards a carry ish against Nebraska in that last game. If you take out the, all the sack yardage and remove. Uh, Helensky, Helensky's rushing yards, which was negative 47. Uh, <laughs> but which isn't, I mean, which is not great, but that's scary. So the whole team went, uh, went 13 and 14 with their TD to interception ratio last year. So I just don't think there's a passing attack that can help them out for that one or two bad r- runs they have on a possession and then they can't throw out of it. And I think that's where Nebraska will take advantage, especially since Northwestern lost their leading receiver who had the vast majority of the yards and catches. So I really think Nebraska can, if they, if they come out and play like they should, and they should be and frost should be very desperate to come out and hang a big number up. They should be able to cover this double digits. Yeah, and it's it's. I think it's funny, you know. Right off the bat, we have a situation, and a lot of y'all have been with us for college basketball season. We saw this a little bit with college basketball, but maybe not quite as much. And you don't really see it in baseball very often, being a money line sport. You kind of do see it every once in a while, but you're just you're taking a win or a loss. You have this middle opportunity, but right off the bat, I think it's really interesting. And this is why I post my numbers, and this is why when I evaluate the model, if I'm trying to evaluate the strength in the model, I don't tend to do it off of right and wrong. I try to do it on how close the predicted. Sp- spread was to the actual final game outcome again i'm saying nebraska minus 12 but depending on when you bet tells you which side to be on on this and so that's why i post those numbers so that you can shop around try to find good numbers and as the number moves throughout the week you can try to either take a number if you think it's an advantageous one or wait if you looked at the start of the week and you said i like nebraska but you know model says 12 and i don't want to lay 13 and you waited now you've got a much better number um if you looked at it and saw northwestern plus 13 you could go ahead and jump on it so it's that's why I post the number out there because, again, we've got one already right now that early in the week it said Northwestern, now later in the week it says Nebraska. So it's right either way. That's why I said I don't like to look at right wrong because it, it loses the information. What I like to look at is, is model says Nebraska by, by 12, and if Nebraska wins by 10, 13, whatever, like we were pretty close, and if Nebraska wins by 50, then it's like, hmm. <laughs> like last year, if it happens like last year's game, we start saying, all right, maybe the model needs to adjust on one of these two teams a little bit, right? Don't overreact, but, you know, maybe there's something going on here. And so that's how we tend to grade these models is how close the uh, predicted final outcomes are to the actual final outcomes. Because like I said, depending on the timing of your wager, the model would indicate two different things here. So all about the timing here. Hopefully you're following these lines throughout the week and you could be on the side that you want at a number that you like instead of being uh, in a situation where you have a bad number. Uh, almost a similar thing happened here for the game that Cousin Jared and I skipped, Wyoming and Illinois. 
The model on this one says um, uh, Illinois minus 10.3. And when Cousin Jared and I recorded earlier in the week, it was Illinois minus 10 with a little bit of juice on the nose. He was minus 115. And I told him at the time, I said, this line number is is like perfect. Like there's just no way that you want to jump on early in the week. This number's moved out. And now it's Illinois minus 14. And getting 14 with Wyoming, I think is a fantastic play here. Uh, Our patience has paid off on this one. Um, Wyoming plus 14 is an A grade play for me. Uh, getting that key number of 14 on that push protection, they might also lose by 13 and you win. They could keep it close. Uh, Illinois is definitely the better team at home, but this is just way too many points to start off the season. A lot of uncertainty here early on in the season. Not exactly sure what you're going to get from some of these teams. So grabbing two touchdowns with a decent team in Wyoming against an Illinois team that's also, I mean, just two kind of mad teams, right? It's just, it's a lot of points here for uh, Illinois is not, you know, running away with the big 10 scary, right? And Wyoming obviously isn't that good either, but that's kind of the whole point is neither one of these teams is that great. Grab 14 points and see what uh, will happen here with Wyoming. It's an great pick for me. Uh, Jake, how are you playing this one? Yeah, I'm, I'm grabbing Wyoming with you. I'm, I, that's, I really like this play, especially at plus 14. Uh, I mean, everybody, like, I love Bellman. I think he's going to do a good job. And I think, Illinois is going to get better under him. But everyone was talking about Illinois' defense, kind of like that they were good and stuff. Maybe if we really start diving under the hood, they weren't near as good as the points they let up. They got a little bit lucky. They were giving up 367 yards a game, 215 passing, and 150 uh, rushing, ranking like ninth, 10th, and 11th in, the, in those kinds of uh, stats. They've got a decent quarterback that came in with DeVito, but he's really got nobody to throw to. You've got Casey Washington, who was the second leading receiver, who had all of 294 yards, their next best. Didn't uh, didn't have a reception all year last year. Was on the team, played, but didn't catch the ball. And I mean, they've got a tight de- a tight end with 17 catches and 129 yards. There's not a lot there from the passing game. Their running game is going to be good. They bring back most offensive line, but they're going to be good. So I'm taking Wyoming. The only part that really nervous, as, as of last I looked, they still haven't announced who the starting quarterback is going to be. <laughs> I mean, after getting after getting fleeced in the Utah State uh, trade with quarterbacks, they uh, <laughs> they they see they don't really have. It just kind of scares me. Um, and their returning pass catchers combined for 51 51 catches and 500 yards and three touchdowns. So there's a little bit to be nervous there. With, with the decent defense that Illinois has, but I think they're good enough they'll be able to keep it close. Yeah, and uh, you know you talk about the returning production again. Kind of talk about you know not really great for either side. A lot of question marks for both sides. That's kind of the point grab at fourteen. At thirteen, I was like, hey, well, I mean, plus thirteen is a decent investment. You know, now we're getting fourteen. I'm like, hey, like that push protection on on. 14, like we could easily see this game being something like, you know, 31 17 or something would not surprise me at all. Hey, we've got a push. So, I mean, the fact that we're getting that push is a nice gift here uh, for this one. Two teams, like you said, we don't, we don't know a whole lot about, um, you know, you always talk about with quarterbacks, right? If you haven't announced a quarterback at this point, you start getting into the hole. If you have two quarterbacks, you have zero quarterbacks type talk, right? Yeah. And uh, sometimes that works, you know, every once in a while, you know, the back of like in the day, you know, with Florida, right? Well, and Michigan last year did it basically with the two and made it to the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. So it's like every once in a while it can work, but uh, in, in, indoor sometimes too. You hope mate, you're hoping you're hoping that it's like they have a game plan, whether it's alternating, they have something to work, or whether it's one guy and they're just kind of playing quite early on to try to surprise the defense and not know what to expect. That sort of thing. You're kind of hoping for that as it gets later on in the season, it gets it gets a little scarier. So you never know what sort of shenanigans are happening here with the quarterback announcements, right? Yeah, yeah. Here's a kind of a question for you. With the whole transfer portal and how that's at, do you see do you think we'll be able to see a lot of two quarterback scenarios anymore? Because I, I would think not. I would think I would think not. I in general a lot of times I think that well, I, yes and no. I think we're going to decrease situations where you have two because one of those guys is going to leave. The the issue yeah. is that what happens when multiple guys start coming into a place and thinking they can win a job. That's where it's going to get going to get questionable. There, I, I think. I think we'll probably see a little bit fewer, but I still think we'll have situations where a coach doesn't really know what he's going to get. And so he's going to tell multiple guys like, yeah, you can come win this job, you know, and you know, coaches sometimes, you know, (laughs) trying to get guys, they'll fudge the truth a little bit. And uh, so I think we might still see a a few of them, but you won't see quite the same year after year, same two guys battling out because one of those guys is going to bail. Yeah, because it's really surprised me that uh, Harbaugh was able to hold on to both quarterbacks there. I thought one of them would have gone. Yeah, that's that's I think the anomaly. I, I we're not. I just don't think we're going to see a lot of that type, type situation. 
Uh, a game that Cousin Jared and I talked about last uh, or early in the week, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, UConn and Utah State. Uh, Utah State is a uh, massive favorite, of course, over UConn. I grabbed 27 and a half with UConn. Uh, I was really hoping for 28. 27 is a reasonable number that this game could land on as well. Now the numbers dropped to 26 and a half, and there's juice on UConn. So the number is moving the direction that we played it. Um, again, now you can grab Utah State, only have to lay minus 26 and a half, which is a better number than 27 and a half, and you only have to lay minus 102 on the odds there. Jake, what's your take on this one? Yeah, I'm, t- I'm taking Utah State here. I, I know we talked, like Jared and you talked about, if they get out of hand and all that, the backup quarterbacks and stuff won't, won't be as good. But, I mean, the backup quarterback, I think you say his name, Legas, 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 um, for, for Utah State came in after Bonner got hurt in the – uh, Ch- Mountain West Championship come in as the MVP of the bowl game they played in, the Louisiana Bowl, I think. So I, I don't think there's that much of a drop-off there. I think Utah State has a really good uh, offensive attack and a really good defense. They're they're going to be <laughs> leaps and bounds and not even the same league as UConn because UConn is bad. It yeah. might not be as bad as last year. I mean, they brought in Jim Mora. They, they, so they almost can't be. I mean, that offense was – I mean, just like right out of the 1940s. I mean, that offense was abysmal. I, I, I it, it feels like they have to be a little bit better just by sheer luck, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and I mean, they brought in uh, Taquan Robinson from Penn State, who seems to be more of a threat with his legs than his arm. But you know that, that adds a different wrinkle in your for the defenses I have to watch. So it might be a little bit better, but I don't think you'll see it here, especially with Blake Anderson and the coaching job he did last year. It took basically the same team that went 1-11 and went 11-3 and and won the conference championship. That's a huge turnaround in one year because you're basically working with the same group of players. Uh, so I, I really – I think Utah State's going to – hang a number on this Connecticut team and it's going to be nasty. Yeah. I'd like to kind of what took up with that first game here with Nebraska Northwestern, uh, a little bit of a middle opportunity, much smaller than that one, but at a decently key number. So, I mean, it sounds like we're, we're hoping for 27, right? That way, if you grab 27 and a half with me on UConn, you know, you get that one. And at this point with 26, it, we, we both can win. So a little bit of a middle opportunity with a number moving again, I'm just going to let it ride here. Uh, I've got some good, uh, you know, a much better line, a much better number on UConn earlier in the week uh, than now. Uh, again, 27 is a reasonable outcome, and, and you got the minus 102 there for Utah State. Like Cousin Jared and I talked about, this should be a low-scoring game. He is on the under on this one um, as a reminder, and, and I tend to agree. I think it's going to be relatively low-scoring. UConn's not going to be able to score many points. Uh, I hope it's a snooze fest, uh, personally, since I'm on UConn, but it, it, Utah State should win this one handily. The only question is, is there a backdoor? Uh, is there a late garbage touchdown, that sort of thing? Uh, but, I mean, it, it shouldn't be a close game. I think we all know that. The, the, the drama will be at the end exactly by how many points they win it by. Yeah, uh, when, when you see lines moving like this one did and the Nebraska one did, like how how much movement are you looking for before you start thinking, all right, somebody knows something I don't, or is that even ne- never really? I, I don't ever think that. the 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 only time I, I I do start questioning if there's an injury thing, I want to just double check and make sure, like, oh, that something didn't get announced that I missed. Um, but otherwise, otherwise, and, and it's a great question. I've talked about this a little bit um, previously, and I've tweeted about. I've done research into this. Uh, the you know there used to be a time when numbers would move and that was really predictive and now numbers move and you want to get the best of the number but that doesn't mean it's predictive it doesn't mean the same thing it just means and i've tweeted about this a lot you know you want to grab the good numbers you want to shop around that's always very important but there used to be a time when a number moving was someone knows something and that didn't always win but if you if the number moved your direction you were going to win you know 60 percent of the time and when it didn't you were going to win 40 percent of the time so you were just trying to get the number moving your way more often than not and that could get you to 54, 55% a profitable season. Um, but yeah, these days, the last couple of years have tracked this and number moving one way or the other, it's it's not, it's it's just the numbers change and someone has, someone has an angle on it that's different, but it doesn't necessarily, it's not quite like it used to be where it's like, oh, someone knows something. It's kind of like, I don't really no. think too much about it. But like I said, the only, the only thing is the injury, the update, someone's coming back, that sort of thing is always, that's the one where if the number moves, it's it's real. If it's yeah. a, a, an announcement on an injury or something like that, where it's like, then you got to really take that into consideration. Otherwise, it's like, I don't know, sometimes it's the right move and sometimes it's not. You just never really know. <laughs> Uh, to the late games here, we're going to talk about the UTEP uh, North Texas game. Cousin Jerry talked a lot about this one. I had some great insight on uh, Monday's episode there. He was talking about wanting the under and the official update from him. That number has gone back up to 55. That was the key number that he wanted. And he's got an official pick on that under 55 at minus 115, a one unit play on that. Uh, kind of just talking about Monday, 55 and a half for him would be a two unit play, but just at 55. 
Uh, it's just a one unit play, but that's the key number there uh, for that total that he wanted to go under on. He explained why I agreed. I, I think the under makes a lot of sense. I grabbed UNT at a pick'em. It's now UNT minus one and a half. Not a huge difference there. Uh, Jake, what do you have for us on this one? I, th- I think you and Jared nailed it with your analysis there. I'm playing the under with Jared. I, I don't think there's going to be a lot of points in this game. There's no need to dive back into it if you really want to know the opinions on it. Because they hit everything I was going to say. Just watch the first the uh, first episode of this week. Yep, yep. Short and sweet there. And like you said, he, he was hoping for that 55. He got it. He's locked that in. Uh, if you haven't got that 55 yet, if you can find a 55 and a half, jump on that as well. The under there makes a lot of sense. And then we have one late game there, Vanderbilt and Hawaii. I grabbed Hawaii plus, uh, I believe it was plus seven uh, earlier in the week, seven and a half. I can't remember what number I got there. And now it's all the way up to nine and a half. People are betting on Vanderbilt here. Like we talked about the number going one direction or the other. I don't really know what it means. It's not really, I'm not really scared that the number's gone the other direction here. I'm not really pumped. I'm not thinking with UConn. I'm like, oh, UConn's got this now because it's down to 26 and a half. I'm like, yeah, maybe it'll win. Maybe it won't. You know, Hawaii's up to nine and a half. I'm like, yeah, maybe it'll win. Maybe it won't. You know, the number has uh, been more favorable. So if you waited on this one, you've got a better number at nine and a half on Hawaii than I grabbed on the first episode there. Uh, Kristen Jared also had an update on this. We talked about if the Hawaii, if the number gets to 10, uh, that's his buy point on Hawaii. He thinks that's just too many points. So right now it's at nine and a half. Uh, but he'll tweet about that, and we'll add that to the sheet as well, get that all taken care of here uh, later in the day. By the time you watch this, it should be up. Um, but again, if he gets a 10, that's his buy point. I, w- I mean, I already got an A-pick on Hawaii. I already talked about why I think this is going to be a tight game. Uh, Vanderbilt's just terrible, and them being favored, going to Hawaii. If you were going to, you know, you know, if they were going to, like, South Carolina in the situation, it's like, ah, oh, it's not that far or whatever, but, like, going out from – Tennessee to Hawaii, that road trip, I mean, that's a rough road trip there. I like Vanderbilt's just really bad. I just can't imagine. They may win by 20. Hawaii's going to be really bad this year. But like, like Cousin Jerry and I talked about, if Hawaii's going to Hawaii's gonna accidentally win a game or two this season, like this is a great shot for them uh, to get a, a, a huge win to start off the season. I think they got a chance to hang in there, maybe accidentally win if not lose to close. So I took Hawaii, and again, now it's up to nine and a half. Uh, Jake, what do you got for us here? Yeah, I, I really like Hawaii in this scenario. <laughs> I loved them. I loved them when you got them. Uh, and the more that line moves, the more I want them. Uh, I, I don't think there's a big discrepancy between these two teams. I think right. just putting hairs, they're going to be both really bad. Um, they both are going to really want this game. They're going to, and both the coaches know that. So they're going to be playing. I don't mean this in a bad way, but they're both going to be playing to win because they they know this this right here is one it's, of it's maybe it's the Super three. Bowl. <laughs> yeah. It's one of maybe two or three that they have. And I think there's a little bit, maybe a little bit more motivation on Hawaii's end, seeing that SEC logo on Bandy to be able to just kind of like get a little up for this game because it'll be one of the bigger games they get. So I, I really like Hawaii. And depending on how some of the early games go, and I'll tweet this out if I do it, I may sprinkle a little bit on the Hawaii money line just, to, right. see, just to see what happens because I like number two. It's not, a, it's not a crazy day. It's huge plus odds. And again, it's not a game that we expect to win. But like we talk about with baseball, if the probability that they win is greater than the implied probability on the money line, it makes sense, right? Just like you said, sprinkle a little bit, not a lot, just a, a small amount to say, like, they might accidentally win this game. Yeah, half a unit or something, and that's a huge payout. I'm completely with you. Hawaii, I, you know, Hawaii is an interesting spot. Like, this is a big game for them. They might accidentally be bowl eligible. They're obviously going to be really terrible, but they have a really soft schedule with a bunch of those teams coming to Hawaii. But they're going to have to win every single close game if they have a hope for that. They probably aren't going to make a bowl game. They're most likely scenarios probably win three or four games. But it's not inconceivable that they can that if they win the close games and they got to start with this one. You know, if they if they know any of these close games, they're not going to do it because they do get a tough a couple of tough games. Um, but yeah, I mean they can absolutely win this game. So for Hawaii, it's huge. Like you said, and it's huge to get the seeing the SEC logo. Huge for Hawaii. They will absolutely be up for it. And they're able to, they'll be up for it just because they're not going to win many games this year with the SEC slate. I mean, they know they're looking at a two or three win type season and they want to get every single win they can. Um, so like you said, both teams will be playing. It's funny when you say like both teams are going to play to win, right? It's like, it's funny when you say that. Like, I get what you're saying, but it's 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 funny to hear because it's like, don't they normally play to win? <laughs> but but I get what you're saying. Yeah, they're, yeah exactly. They're, they're both going to be motivated for this one. Uh, but yeah, it's the travel effect. And like I said, both teams really bad. Vanderbilt's a little better for sure, but... I mean, it's hard to say by how much, especially with all the turnover that Hawaii's had and how bad Vanderbilt's been. It's like, sure, they're going to be better, but like better by enough to win by 10 is on the road. Like that's, that's a tall ask, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, 
especially getting your head out of the beaches and stuff because I'm sure most of those kids haven't been to Hawaii. So, you know, it'd be hard for me to get motivated to play when I'm out there. So. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. If I, I, I've never been to Hawaii. So if I, you know, if I was out there, I'd be like, hey, like this is a beautiful, I just want to hang out all day. You know, I don't want to you know, get in a su- little sunburn. All of a sudden now someone hit you on the field. Now that hurts, you know, I'm sunburned. Yeah. <laughs> But that's the reason we didn't play college football, though, I guess, yes. right? Yeah, exactly. It was the sunburn in Hawaii. That was what kept me away. Exactly. exactly. Otherwise, otherwise, we were there, you know? Obviously. <laughs> all right. Uh, that's all we're going to cover. Uh, we skipped two games here, but, again, we covered uh, those games uh, in the earlier episode already. So every game has been covered. Now all of the FBS games, whether it's this episode or the previous one, again, I'll put that um, a link. I'll put a banner up. I'll put a clip. I'll put something up so you can link to it if you haven't watched it already. Hopefully you already have. Um any uh, any parting words here, uh, Jake? Before we head to uh, the action this weekend? No, I'm so excited to get like you know I love baseball, so much fun, but the games go are just slow at times. And yeah, now now not that this week zero is an incredible slate, but you know it's just a little bit of exciting to get something new in. It is, and cousin Jared talked about that, right? There is a little bit of that, like it's a, it's kind of a perfect ramp up because you know if you if you inject week one straight into your veins, man, that's some crazy stuff. How how chaotic that gets, and you start off usually with Thursday, and there's like seven games at one time, and you're just like, what's going on? I mean, it's you know it's Saturday, it's just games over. So it's nice to have that little like ease in, you know. But a lot of a lot of rough football. But hey, like I, like I said, a lot of times last year, you don't have to watch them to make the money. So it's going to be some rough football, but it'll be football. It'll be exciting to watch, and there's some money making opportunities uh, on the board here. I think. Uh, so I'm like you, I'm, I'm really excited. As much as I love baseball, I'm always excited for football season. Yes. Yeah. All righty. Well, that's all we have for you today. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Picks with Impressor. A reminder to check out the Google Sheet for model picks, projections, and results. You can find that link in more at the website, www.pickswithaprofessor.com. If you haven't done so yet, please click that subscribe button to ensure all the sports betting content we've brought on this channel is dropped right into your feed. We'll see you next week to kind of brief recap week zero and mainly talk about all the week one games. A lot of good ones there. Until then, best of luck this weekend. And remember, you can get your betting money, but please don't bet your any money.